179 Red Claw caught in unnatural Queensland waters in our pots. Stay till the very end of this video to see the amazing footage of all these Red Claw caught. Check out this huge Red Claw that Cody caught. It's massive from Mundara Dam in Mount Isa. Cody spotted this huge Red Claw in the boat but he caught it when off the bank. Well done, Cody. And he also caught it by hand. That is an awesome effort. Cody also caught this massive yabby uh, in a pot using cat food as bait. So here we are out at Mundara Dam in Mount Isa. I tried just here last night. Nice little hole here. Pretty rocky. It's a um, nice little spot out here actually. Yeah, this is a... Uh, I reckon you're probably close to 300. That's good size. Welcome to Fishing with Steve D. Well guys, I've just had very new updated information that there are going to be major changes in the Red Claw fishing in Queensland. Now these changes, I will be breaking it all down in the following videos to come after this video. We're going to be breaking it down, we're going to be talking about what's changed so stay tuned for those uh, videos. The pages you need to know about is obviously the Queensland Fisheries website and Facebook page and this one, NQ Red Claw Yabbies Australia. Now if you're not a member of this NQ Red Claw Yabbies Australia page, do yourselves a favour and join guys because you'll learn everything to do with Red Clawing will be on this group. So do yourselves a favour Check it out and join. Welcome to Fishing with Steve D. Well, today I have got some very, very important news. Major, major changes in red claw fishing in Queensland, and we're going to be breaking it right down in this video right now. Here we go, folks. A few more flippers. Getting a bit bigger. That's a that's great. Let's get a few more. Okay, so here we have the old natural waters uh, diagram. And as you can see, it's up the top of end of Queensland into Weeper, extending through to the Gulf of Carpentaria. Now, if we have a look at the new map, now what you'll find in the new map, basically the whole east coast has now on the western side of the range, Great Dividing Range, is natural. So there will be a bag limit of 40 red claw per person in your possession at any one time. Females carrying eggs in natural waters must be returned back to the water. On the eastern side, it is illegal to put any red claw back into the water, period on the eastern side of the Great Dividing Range and uh, on that right hand side you'll see there's no bag limit and um, it's quite um, obvious there sort of uh, but the biggie the big rule change is 
the entrances on the traps on the eastern side you cannot use any traps in the rivers unless they are five centimeters um, now if you're fishing in the lakes and the impoundments and the dams you can use between five and ten centimeter ring entrances in the traps that is the big rule change with these new rules now that has to do everything with the platypus on the eastern side of the Great Dividing Range I'm guessing there's a lot more platypus in the rivers so this makes good sense to uh, keep the smaller entrances of five centimeters and if you have a look at the top right corner you'll see all the lakes and dams and all the impoundments that you're allowed to use uh, traps with a maximum of four entrances so if you've got any more than four entrances you can't use them and uh, they must have between five centimeters and up to ten centimeters in the lakes dams impoundments only now again I will repeat if you are fishing the river system you need to have a pot that has a five centimeter no bigger than five centimeter entrances in the rings that is the biggie in the new rule changes so let's have a look at these pots uh, that we're doing now fisheries have had a look at these up in Townsville and they have commented they are very good strong and, uh, pots and they really did like the construction they could see that they're well made um, and you can continue to use these pots that we do um, in the lakes and impoundments which 99% of people who are red chlorine will be in lakes dams and impoundments however the big thing that you will need to take notice of is if you're going to be using these in rivers uh, particularly any rivers on the east side you're going to need to have the smaller five centimeter rings in these pots now I'm going to look into making a few with the smaller five centimeter rings so we can cater for both markets so stay tuned for that guys that may take a little time to do um, but I'm going to look into that also with these pots you don't have to have your street number on there just put on your surname street name and suburb on the fixed end of the float surname only on a tag on the float same as the pot okay so this is how flat they are they are fully collapsible and they are so flat so you can stack um, four of them on top of each other you're allowed four of these pots per person well just pulled the pot out and she is absolutely loaded it is chockers these pots certainly do the trick there would have to be over a hundred in that pot without a doubt and there's some big ones in there too so it's a nipper on that one I'm guessing probably 150 200 in there there's a big fella here hey well that pot does the trick mate look at that the bottom is just black from red claw just have a look um, when you're looking for similar holes look for vegetation lily pads lots and lots of weed beds um, weedy banks or tree roots lily pads but most of all the weed beds are so so important because the big red claw love this especially if it's amongst big dead trees or lay downs that are in the water the red claw really love big thick dead trees the bigger red claw I have found will hang around the big uh, trees however if there's any barra in this uh, hole or the waters you're searching 
to get it, guys, because Farah will eat her red claw. So the honey hole that you're looking for when you're looking for new water, it must not have Barra in it. So it doesn't matter if the water is crystal clear like this hole here, or whether it's muddy, dirty, whether it's flowing or whether it's still. If there's good vegetation there, there will be red claw in there. One thing to remember, don't ever eat red claw in stagnant water, as the meat will be a orange color and toxic. So if the meat is orange, don't ever ever eat red claw if it's orange. It needs to be that pure white color. Um, if it's not the pure white color, then disregard it. You see, red claw are, are immune to stagnant water, but it is highly poisonous to human consumption, which is caused by stagnant water. Well, just pulled the pot out. And she is absolutely loaded. It is chockers. These pots certainly do the trick. There would have to be over a hundred in that pot. Without a doubt. And there's some big ones in there too. So there's a nipper on that one. I'm guessing probably 150 to 200 in there. There's a big fella here. Yeah. Well that pot does the trick mate. Look at that, the bottom is just black from red claw. That is cool. Alright, we're going to have a count. 